Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Power Rankings. It's been a little while since we've done these Power Rankings. Some teams have played seven games. Some teams have played one game. First one since uh, the All-Star break. It is now February 18th. And just a quick recap, going into the All-Star break, we had the Avalanche in first, Carolina second, Florida third, Minnesota fourth, Toronto fifth to fill out that top five. Bottom five, well, in 32nd, we had Montreal. Then we had the Devils, Yotes, Flyers, and Sabres. So, what has changed? Let's get right to it. In 32nd this week, we have the Montreal Canadiens. They got their ninth win, however, so there's some positivity. Uh, Ducharme gets fired after they lose 7-1 to the Devils. They go 1-4 this week, so obviously they lose three straight with Martin St. Louis behind the bench. However, they beat the Blues in OT today, and they're going to flee someone in the Sherratt trade soon. In 31st, we have the Philadelphia Flyers. Giroux is on the block. Couturier and Alice are out. Half the team is basically out. Lots of caps placed to play with next year and give Fletcher more opportunity to sign bad deals. Hart's still a question mark, but the whole team is still a question mark. They go 0-3-1 this week. Not a good week. They lose three uh, games in regulation and one in OT. In 30th, we have the Kraken. They go 1-3, beating the, you know, now out of the playoffs, Anaheim Ducks. They got trounced by the Leafs, Jets, and Yotes, and trade season is on for the Seattle Kraken. Moving on to 29th, and here we have Jersey, the New Jersey Devils. They go 2-3 and three, uh, with both seven goal games coming as wins and without Hughes in the lineup. They beat the Habs 7-1, so they stay up on them, and like Montreal, they beat the St. Louis Blues. Jesper Bratz out as well, so Devils, not too bad going 2-3. and three. In 28th, we have the Arizona Coyotes, who have just moved to a new arena next year and have 100 fans. I mean, 5,000. They go 1-2, and two, they get walloped by the Canucks, but they beat the Kraken, then they lose 4-3 to the Bolts in an actually surprising tight game, but that's what the Yotes do. In 27th, we have the Buffalo Sabres. They go 2-1-1 one and, one, and a beautiful Heritage Classic jersey. Has anyone seen that? Wow, that looks good. It's looking up in Buffalo. Tuck is a point per game. Power was off to the Olympics. Portillo was crushed in college. Quinn in the AHL. Hack Skinner scored four goals in a game. Sabres are 27th. In 26, we have the Chicago Blackhawks. They go 2-2 two and two with wins versus, well, Canadian teams, Edmonton and Winnipeg. And then they get beat up 5-1 by the Blues. And then Line A puts up a hat trick in a 7-4 drumming. The big question here is, where is Mark andre Fleury? going to be traded to at the deadline. In 25th is the team I picked to win the whole bloody Stanley Cup, and that's the New York Islanders. Damn, they suck. They start with the win, they end with the win, so there's something positive. Beat the Canucks and Bees, but they lose to the Oilers, Flames, and Sabres. Islanders' playoff hopes are all but dead. I'm saying it now. There goes my money. In 24th, just like before the All-Star break, we have the Ottawa Senators, and they played lots of hockey. They played seven games. They go four and three. Sabres, Devils, Capitals, Canes, they beat all of them. They lose to the, you know, the Bees, Pens, and the Blues, but heck, you beat Carolina. Well done, Ottawa Senators. In 23rd, we have a team dropping four spots from before the All-Star break. It's the San Jose Sharks. Two games, two losses. Well, one in OT versus the Canucks and a 3 nothing loss to the Oilers. Sharks, I'm going to be honest with you, they aren't looking playoff ready at the moment. Not at all. Outside looking in, I don't see them making it. In 22nd, we have the Detroit Red Wings. And let's just say Cider is a beast. That hit, uh, you know, the back hit on Kreider, that was lovely. Wow. 51 games to get 30 assists too. What a stud. And people question Stevie Y when he picked them. Just imagine him and Evanson together. Detroit is going to be dangerous in the next few years. In 21st, and to be fair, they could they they could have been 22nd. Um, I book a Disney trip to California. Ducks look like they're in the playoffs, and then right when I book it, oh no, they go 0-3. They lose to the Oilers, Flames, and Kraken, and they're just letting down Zegris, just like the judges did at the All-Star game. Come on, Anaheim. In 20th, this team goes 3-1 and one this week. That's the Vancouver Canucks. They beat the Sharks in OT. Demko stole a, a win versus the, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs. You know, crushed the Coyotes. 
but they allowed six goals in a loss to the Islanders, so that's not good. But hey, move up two spots from 22 to 20. In 19th, this team goes 4-1 and one this week. Um, you know, their only loss comes to a team that in their last 10 games were 9-1 and one, and now top of their division, Calgary Flames. to beat the Capitals, then, you know, three teams they should beat in the Hawks, Sabres, and Canadians. Though goaltending is questionable right now, Line A is on fire with that hat trick. And we move on to 18th, moving up two spots as the Winnipeg Jets. They go 4-1-1 one, and one with two wins versus the Wild. Wow. They then take out the Preds and the Kraken as well. Losses come to the Stars and Hawks. But they move up because they beat the Minnesota Wild. And let's be honest, no one can do that. In 17th, we have the Dallas Stars. They go 3-1 and one this week. Their only loss coming to the Avalanche. And then they avenge that loss by beating them 4-1. They beat the Preds in their first game back after the All-Star break. And then the Jets in overtime. The Dallas Stars are pressing. They're pushing for that playoff spot. And they are looking good. In 16th, dropping one spot from before the All-Star break. From 15 to 16, we have the LA Kings. They play one game, and it's a 5-2 loss to the Edmonton Oilers. So they have to drop. They, they, they lost one game. They played one game. Sucks. It is what it is. Sorry, LA. That means in 15th, moving up two spots and jumping ahead of the Kings because they beat them 5-2, and it's the Edmonton Oilers. And busy time for the Oilers, but after a rough start post-All-Star break, losing to Vegas and Chicago, they go 4-0, and and look at that. Goaltender stops some pucks, and they win some games. McDavid, Dreisaitl, and Kane, they're all going. They put up 7 versus Anaheim as well. And now they're in the playoffs. Well, it looks like it anyway. And then we switch to a team that doesn't look too good. That's the Boston Bruins. Brad Marchand gets suspended six games. They go 1-3-1, one, and one, and it's just not a good week. You know, they beat the Senators, then they lose to the Rangers in a shootout where they should have taken advantage of a Cole Gorgiev. Uh, then they lose to the Islanders, Canes, and Pens. Ouch. In 13th, we have another team that's dropped this time from 8. That's the National Predators. Rough week, 0-3. Oh, Stars, Jets, and Caps all beat them, and that's how you drop in the rankings. Don't win a game. Just just lose to every team that's below you. That's what Nashville did this week. In 12th, we have the St. Louis Blues. They stay in 12th. And, well, I don't care how good your work, uh, you know, your week is. You can go 6-0. and If you lose to the Montreal Canadiens, it's a t- disappointing week. And they lost an OT to the Habs. You know, 7-4 to the Devils as well. Ooh, not good. Big question. Who's going to be the goaltender going in the playoffs? Huso or Bennington? In 11th, we have the Vegas Golden Knights. They go 1-2, and two, you know, shut out the Oilers, and they get shut out in their next two. 6 nothing drumming to the Calgary Flames, and then they lose 2 nothing to the Avs in Eichel's debut. That was a really good game, though. I, I thoroughly enjoyed watching that game. Uh, Jack Eichel took it easy. He'll be easing his way in. Knights drop to 11th. In 10th, moving up three spots is the Washington Capitals. They go 3-2 and two this week. They lose to the Sens, not good. They lose to the Jackets, but hey, you know, they made sure to beat the Habs, so that's good, and the Flyers. And then they beat a good team who had a bad week in the Nashville Predators. They move up three spots because, well, Nashville and Boston did so bad. In ninth, and some people might be against this one, but it's the Carolina Hurricanes dropping from two to nine, going one, two, and two. With lots of playoff style games, let's be honest. OT lost to the Leafs, uh, great game. Same with Florida, crushed the Bruins, but then they lose to the Senators and the Wild. But, you know, everyone's losing to the Wild except for, well, Winnipeg. In eighth, somehow dropping one, but that's how it is. They go 1 0 1 this week. It's the New York Rangers. Both games go to a shootout. They beat the Bees, and Igor goes nuts because of concussion protocol, comes back in and wins, and then they lose to the Detroit Red Wings. I hate shootouts. I really do. Just give me more OT. Give me more OT. In 7th and a massive jump from 14th to 7th. That's the Calgary Flames. Five wins since the All-Star break. Markstrom playing lights out hockey and a shutout machine. Their whole team is. They grab Toffoli uh, from Montreal. Who scores in game one. He plays. They put up, what, three six-goal games, then two five-goal games. This team is hotter than a flame right now. In six, dropping two spots. People are going to hate me on this, but it's the Minnesota Wild, and it's just because they lost the two games. I'm sorry. Yes, it was against the Winnipeg Jets, but they lost the two games against the Jets. However, they beat Carolina, who I you just saw drop to ninth, and Detroit. So, Wild go from four to six after the All-Star break. Then in fifth, this team jumps up five spots. It's the Pittsburgh Penguins. They go four and one with their only loss, coming as a 4-1 loss to the Maple Leafs. Uh, where they outshot them by about 20. 
Uh, their wins come against the Bees, and then three teams they should beat in the Sens, Devils, and Flyers. Oh yeah, and Sidney Crosby netted his 500th career goal. In fourth, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning going 2-1 and one this week. They lose a close game to the Avalanche, then they beat teams they should, even though it was a surprisingly close, uh, you know, close game against the Oats, though Arizona seems to do this often. And then they dismantle Jersey 6-3. to three. If only they would dismantle Jersey's Jersey, Jersey. In third, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Leafs go 3-2 and two this week with their losses coming to Calgary and Vancouver. However, they outshot and outchanced and outplayed both those teams. Then they destroyed the crack and they outplayed the Pens, which saw Jack Campbell return to form, and they beat the Hurricanes in a phenomenal game. In second, this team only had one game this week, and it was a 3-2 overtime win versus Carolina. Barkov has that ridiculous behind-the-back deke and backhand goal, and... Wow, wouldn't that be a fun playoff series? Panthers versus Canes. This team is so, so good. Dangerous. Every single line flows. I wouldn't want to play them. And that means, once again, for what seems like the 10th week in a row, but I think it's only three, it's the Colorado Avalanche. They do lose a game here. They go 3-1, and one, only loss coming to the Stars, whom they beat as well. Then they took out two top teams in Vegas and Tampa, so you can't pull them out of that top spot. This team is so good. Also, Nazem Kadri sets new records, um, new season high for him. That boy going to get paid, I'm guessing, $7-plus million over five plus years what do you guys think down below let me know those are my power rankings for this week 18th of february 2022 let me know your thoughts down below where you would put each team see you next week